Hi everyone, this is Annika over at The Woke Daisy and welcome to our bonus content, our third bonus episode of this series. We are really, really excited to introduce you officially to Nehal, who is a sassy digital marketer with a passion for blogging, travel, and social media. She is the sunshine in our lives and to this podcast as we've been recording, so we're really excited to, to have you guys get to know her a little bit better. So... Nehal, are you ready? Yes, I am. Far away. Okay, so when did you start your lifestyle and fashion blogging journey, and why? Why did you start it in the beginning to begin with? So I actually started my lifestyle portion when my friends were always coming to me with advice for dating and things, and they were like, hey, how do I know if a guy likes me? How do I know if he wants to be serious? And it kind of got me thinking that people always come to me for dating advice. So the first series of my blogs were all about dating advice like to different people about if a guy's into you, whether you should drop him, how you should feel, if he's acting a certain way and stuff. And a lot of people just started responding so well to that, saying like, wow, this blog really really helped me because it was relatable because I was single and going through that those kind of things all the time and so that's kind of what started my whole blog thing and then another thing was fashion was huge to me I love dressing up I love brands I'm always looking up different brands on Instagram and seeing like their newest collections and so people have always asked me where do you get your clothes from why do you dress this way what who inspires you and things and so I was thinking like, hey, I should let people know where I started getting my clothes from. So I use kind of Instagram as my platform for my fashion blog. And I also write about different beauty tips and skincare products in my blog because it's just something I'm really passionate about. That's super nice. It's like one of the best creative outlets I feel like you could have in life. Um, my purest question is, do your parents check up on your blog? Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a funny question. So the, my parents are super supportive. I told my dad that I loved writing and he was like, you should start a blog. And the craziest part about actually starting a blog is where kind of my digital background or digital marketing background comes in is because I learned how to do everything on my own and my work life helped me with it. I do paid ads on my blog and my work life helped me with that. I created my website on my own. I learned how to do web design. I learned how to do like a search engine optimization. So my blogs come up on the first hit on Google search and everything. So it was really cool just learning that process. And so when I told my dad that I was doing this, he was actually excited more about that, that I'm learning <laughs> something um, related to marketing and growing my marketing background as well. And then once he started reading my posts, I actually sent him a few ones about the dating one and he thought it was funny. Um, he especially likes my travel blogs because um, one, he was in them, and same with my mom. So in some of them, they can see each other. But he just likes how I creatively express my way of what I see, what I feel, the culture around me in different locations and things. But definitely, they do check up on my things, and my mom actually has an Instagram, so she follows me. Um, they've never said anything about the content that I post, whether if it's too racy or I'm dressed a certain way, because they just know that that's kind of the fashion way of things, which I'm really lucky to have parents like that. And my biggest supporter goes to my sister, shout out to you, Richa Tanani, um, because you are the greatest thing that's ever happened to me and my number one fan. That is so that's cute. so sweet. I know. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Can we borrow her? Like, <laughs> adopt you, Richa? We're so lucky we have her. Um, no, so how did you get into digital marketing? Because I know I hear a lot about oh, like, marketing or business or yeah. things, but digital marketing is kind of a niche kind of area, right? Yeah. So how did you get into that? So I was super confused on what to do for my career path um, right at the beginning of a high school. And I knew I hated math and I hated science. Me and too. I wasn't good at it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I wanted to do something more creative, okay? But I didn't want to just be a writer. I didn't want to just be a artist. I didn't want to just be something like that at the beginning of my career because my dad always said you need something stable before you can do a dreamier path like that. And so... That's when my dad introduced me to marketing because he has his own company and he's like, hey, take a look at marketing. You can go a creative route, you can go an analytical route, you can help with your personal branding and that's kind of what stuck to me, like branding. I was like, wow, what do I want Nehal Tanani to be five years from now? I want Nehal Tanani to be a brand. I want people to associate that with like a bigger brand. And so I created my website um, 
with the help of digital marketing. I went into college, majored in marketing, and I was just obsessed with marketing because there are so many different things you can do, like social media, search engine optimization, like I mentioned earlier. There's different tools you can use, and I find it so interesting, like how to grow your Instagram. Like I've read up so much about it. I've made fake accounts to test certain theories to see like what can raise engagement, and it's just fascinating to me. And so that's what kind of really got to me. And Many people can say that I could specialize in social media marketing because that is one of my favorites, but I think that digital marketing is so much broader than that now that you need to know everything and be involved in everything to kind of have that on your bucket of knowing everything marketing related. And so, yeah, I was just really into branding, messaging, and coming up with different strategies on how to grow social media, how to obtain followers, and especially how to... keep your followers and buy your product at the end of the day because that's what you want. And if you don't have a product, it's like, how do they stay with you and resonate with your brand? To those of you who don't know Nahal and don't know how her face lights up, I can tell you <laughs> because me and Rachel have literally just watched her face glow for the last few minutes as she's talking about marketing and you can just sort of tell that the passion's bleeding out of her whenever she's talking about all of these sort of marketing tools and gimmicks and things and skills that you pick up along the way and that she's been in you know into so yeah it seems you're like a melting pot of skills it kind (laughs) of is yeah Yeah. you're an all-in-one kind of person yeah Yeah, I was kind of lucky because what I do with my job is the same as what I do in my side hustle because they kind of go hand in hand all the things that I learn at my work for once actually come into play like even in college when I um finished up my first two years you would go into Eller College of Management and you reapply to your school to be part of the marketing cohort and so I got in the first time which was really amazing and you only do classes that are marketing related and that I loved about college because I didn't have to take BS classes like oceanography and vampire and werewolves which I took um (laughs) and so it was a cool I actually learned a lot in college the last two years the first two years ew no (laughs) so what would you say is your dream job like you're a blogger you're a fashionista Mm. you're a marketer that's a good question. So I have two dream jobs. One is like more of a conventional like path. And so my dream job in marketing would be a digital marketing manager or head of social media kind of position at a giant company, like a corporate company. Um, my other dream job is being a talk show host. So I love talking. Um, I think this podcast is a great way for me to get my voice out there and talk about the things that I'm passionate about. And so one day I will be doing a bachelor recap on E! News. So catch me there. (laughs) And I actually don't doubt that. I don't either. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she will. (laughs) You guys will quickly get to know that Nahal has the most like uplifting, bubbly, confident personality ever she is mind-blowing guys she is definitely a do-it-all kind of woman i'm blushing (laughs) so who's your fashion icon okay kim kardashian (laughs) i love the kardashians i know basic ass bitch over here but um i really truly think that kim kardashian is a fashion icon now especially because of kanye west because he is a great designer and i think he helped her with her wardrobe a lot And so um, her fashion is just incredible in the last five years, and it's changed a lot. And she takes it from a lot of different icons from back in the days, like uh, like Selena and things like and people like that. And so I think her like Madonna is one of her biggest icons. So I think it's really cool just to see what she's wearing at everything. So I'm pretty much putting fire. I mean, wood in the fire right now. But who's like, what's your favorite TV show? Oh, okay. My guilty pleasure TV show, if you didn't already know, is Keeping Up with the Kardashians. But I love TV shows and movies um, a lot because I just think it's really relevant in pop culture and I'm a pop culture geek. And so my favorite TV show would probably be Arrow. I'm a huge Marvel and DC nerd. I actually used to read comic books when I was younger. And so the Marvel movies have been mind-blowingly amazing. And DC TV shows are super fun to watch. Um, I've recently actually gotten into more of Amazon Prime shows because I think they're doing an incredible job with their platform. And then um, movie-wise, like I already mentioned, is the Marvel movies. I second that, actually. <laughs> I think I think a lot of people do, but I am definitely on board with you on that. So I know you've mentioned your dad a lot, and he seems to have guided you in a lot of different mm-hmm. ways. Um, but what's the best advice you've ever received from him or otherwise? Um... So one thing my dad always says is to educate yourself. And he says the learning never stops. 
And at first, I used to be annoyed that my dad used to say that all the time because I have a job and my dad was like, you should take this marketing course or you should take this digital marketing, like a five week prep course. And I was like, dad, I have a job. Like, why do I have to keep like learning? It's kind of annoying because I did college and I did everything. And he was just like, there are people who are going to come out of college and they could snatch up your job in less than five seconds because they are going to have more knowledge. And so you need to continuously educate yourself. Even if you have a job, think of ways that you can make your resume better all the time. And so that really got to me. And then he had, I recently signed up for a digital marketing course and I've been taking it for the past couple months and I'm going to get my digital marketing certification. So hopefully I can add that to my resume and just, it's actually teaching me a lot because I can use the skills that I learned in that course in my work. And so my boss is actually, actually really proud of me as well. That's amazing. That is actually really, really good advice yeah. too. Um, especially for young professionals going out there, mm -hmm. they can be outbeat by anybody. So yeah. To know what's putting you at a competitive edge is an incredible, you know, and to, to be encouraged to keep up that competitive edge is fabulous. Um, so who are some people that have inspired both your blogs and, and professionally? So one, professionally, definitely my dad, as I keep mentioning. I no hate to you, mom. I still love you, but dad has helped me a lot. Um, and then in my personal life and blogs, I would have to say... A lot of my friends because they have always been there for me I love my blogs kind of stem from the advice that they asked me um, so I don't want to name any specific people but my close inner group of friends you know who you are and my sister so they sort of guided you they kind of helped literally grow your career exactly because they would come to, to me with advice and I'd say hey I have so much to say I was like should I just write a blog about it and they're like yeah do it and so then that's how it kind of started. Yeah, that's amazing. That's, it's amazing that you have that kind of group around you. So what are your um, favorite travel destinations? Like, what do you look forward to when you're looking on Expedia for your next trip? So my favorite destination that I went to last year was with my best friend, Nisha, and we did Greece. So we did Santorini, Athens, and... Um, Mykonos, and it was the greatest experience of my life. And this year, Nisha and I are going to be going to Bali and Singapore over the summer. So we are just in the beginning stages of that. So when I look at places that I want to go to, I also have a map. And it just says places that I feel like I have a great cultural experience and things. So when I travel, I really like to get immersed in the culture. I like to do um, like when I went to Greece, we actually did a whole cooking day class of how to make Greek food and it was so fun. So I love doing things like that that are just not drinking and partying the whole time, but really diving myself into the culture, exploring the museums, reading about the history and learning all these cool things and participating as one of the locals. That's incredible. And I am flaming jealous right now. <laughs> um, but you're also always so busy. Like I know that when we've had to schedule things, you always make time for the things that you love. I don't know how you do it, but you do. Um, but what other organizations are you involved with? So I am I love kids. And so if I wasn't in marketing, I wanted to be a pediatrician. And then I saw how many years of schooling that was. And I thought, <laughs> better not. And so uh, I'm involved with Make-A-Wish Foundation. And I volunteer with these kids. Um, I do about I started last year and I did, I granted five wishes last year. And it's such an overwhelmingly joyful process, but it's also kind of hard and emotional because some of these kids are really sick and stuff. And I've had to visit them in a hospital and you don't know if they're gonna make it or not, but I put them my all into the wishes that they want. And the process kind of goes where you visit the kid, um, you kind of take the kid away from the parents so you can really find out what their wish is. Cause a lot of times parents pressure their kids for a wish, maybe like a vacation or something. And you just want to know what the kid wants. So one of the craziest wishes for Make-A-Wish Foundation happened a couple years ago where a kid wanted to be a superhero. So they turned all of San Francisco into Gotham City. And so I, ha I want to be involved in a wish like that because that sounds amazing. But so far I've done wishes that are kind of easier where they want to go to Disneyland or Hawaii. One that I did was for a 17-year-old recently actually. And he had a condition and he wanted to make a recipe book for people with the same condition of better tasting food. So we got a celebrity chef with him to write this book and his book opening is coming out soon. So that's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Wait, that is amazing. That's super exciting. Yeah, so it's, I just love working for Make-A-Wish Foundation. That is one of the organizations I'm involved with and the other one is the Rajasthani Board of USA. And so I'm on the PR chair of that board. It's all of the youth Rajasthani people, but there's not a lot of us. So it's cool to have um, a cultural involvement. I really wanted to 
have cultural roots somewhere in my life. And so I'm part of this Rajasthani board. We have reunions every year. It's about 100 to 150 people who come to these reunions who are the ages of 21 to 35 Rajasthani people. And we're just a youth organization that talks about our culture, learn the history about it, do fun things. And it's in a new city every year. So it's like you get to go on a mini vacation. So this year it's in Nashville. So I'm excited to be checking Nashville out. I lived in Nashville for six months and you are in for a really, really good time. It is an amazing city. I will come to you for advice. Please do. <laughs> um, now speaking of advice and things you're passionate about, which is a lot of things and amazing and always. Um, what are three topics that you're the most excited to talk about on this podcast? So like I mentioned earlier about dating, I'm all about women empowerment. So it really frustrates me when my friends come to me and they tell me how a guy is treating them or they keep settling with the same guy after they've treated them like shit. And so I really want to be that platform for women to – hype them up and be like, leave him. He is trash. And I know it's easier said than done. I've gone into that thing before where you keep trying to make it work with someone. But I'm hoping that I can empower women to just really believe in themselves and think that this is not the love that they deserve. So that's one of the topics. Another one is mental health. Um, I think that I've definitely had some mental health stress issues and things like that during a breakup especially. And people have told me, they're like, hey, you're just sad. And it's not that I'm I'm sad, but it's like something else that just breaks you inside. And it's that feeling that I don't think people, especially South Asians, understand. More more so than others, but parents especially, they just don't understand like what depression is. They don't understand a lot of mental health stigmas that are in society. And so I would love to dive deeper into that and see what people have to say. And then my last one would be about South Asian parents because you love him, you hate him, we don't know. <laughs> but um, no, I just think growing up as a South Asian first generation here, um, it's really different. And I've learned a lot, my parents have learned a lot, and we've both come together to help each other grow and fit into this American lifestyle while keeping our cultural roots. So I'm hoping to talk more about that and see where everyone's at. Are my parents the only ones crazy or is it yours too? No, I definitely do not think you have the only crazy parents because I could probably put mine on certain pedestals as well. But um, what really me and Annika are really curious about is what do you think is your strongest asset in terms of what you bring to the woke they see? So I think that I bring a lot of charm and humor because I have always had this positive outlook in life. I'm happy-go-lucky. I Sometimes it's hard for me to relate with people who have had like hardships and stuff because I don't think my hardships are com – like my hardship would be like I broke a nail and I'm really sad about it versus people who actually go through stuff. So I'm hoping that I can hear people's stories out, especially Annika and Rasham's, um, connect with them on a deeper level, give a positive and humorous spin to it, and – Give a lot of advice to all the listeners out there like, hey, it's going to be okay, yo. We're in this together. That's wonderful. And we'll definitely benefit from having your charming personality. <laughs> and Meho, I just want to say thank you for coming on today. Guys, watch out for the woke they see. It's Anika, Meho, and Rasham. And we're coming at you weekly with brand new episodes. So stay tuned. We're just going to throw in there that she just forgot her name and paused for half a second. So you guys are welcome to make fun of her for the rest of this season about that. Stay woke, be woke. Get woke, oh. stay woke. Okay, get woke.